and welcome to another video in this series and we're very excited because we're here today at Greenwich Peninsula to do secrets of the cable car. So like me, you probably use the cable car every day, but I'm here to point out some of the things that I know you've missed and give you a little bit of history as well. The cable car was first built in London between Alexandra Palace and Crystal Palace, travelling much further across the city than just the short span that it travels across the Thames now. And it was because it wasn't making money in the beginning that in the 1930s, when BBC Television came along, they offered to buy out the two Termini cable car towers and turn them into television transmitters instead. And so that's why just the short section that remains in place now is all that's left. So the first thing that a lot of people don't know is that there's a ghost station right in the middle of the cable car. That's right, it's an abandoned station. They built it on an island in the middle of the Thames. And of course, only people on boats like fishermen ever came to stop to use it. So quite quickly after that was established, it lasted a few years and then they took it out. But the remains of the ghost station and the foundations are still buried down in the bottom of the Thames today. To access the cable car station in the middle of the river, there was a small jetty. And as this was in the days before lifts, there was a staircase of 312 stairs. That's the equivalent to a 15-storey building. Although, there was a sign-up saying that there were just 189 steps instead. Now, the cable car, the two stations that are left today, as you can see, clearly goes in a straight line. Now, they wanted to build it in the zigzag line, but they also found that buried around old parts of the Thames are old plague pits. So they had to build the cable car in a straight line to avoid those plague pits. Cable car pods were also used during the Second World War for shelter. Blackout curtains were hung in the windows and people safely slept in them as bombs only ever explode on the ground below and not in mid-air. Now, we've got some secret footage here which you may not have seen before, what happens when the cable car reaches the other end. Did you know if you get onto one of these capsules and at the end it loops around a secret loop that nobody knows about and comes back and you end up back at the same place where you started? That's brilliant. The cable car station on the north side and the one on the south side are also the only two stations on the cable car network not to have escalator access. Here's something else brilliant that you may not have noticed if you travel on this every day. The maquette seats, which are unique to the cable car. If you look at them really closely, zoom in and look at the design, you can see what they are. That's right, different shades of red rectangles. There's so many great things about the cable car, it's hard to squeeze them all into one video. But we've got time for just two more. And here's possibly the biggest secret of all. Did you know that if you wear an Arsenal kit on the cable car, you get to ride for free? And finally, a secret about the cable car, which I have a personal interest in. Now you may not know that there's a world record to travel back and forth between the two cable car stations. It was set in 2009, the time is 4 minutes and 45 seconds. And to celebrate that, TfL actually commissioned an artist to create a labyrinth, a maze as if it were, and they put one inside every single capsule. And there's this one. So our journey was coming to an end, and we exited out onto the north side of the river. So there you go, hopefully you've learned a thing or two about the cable car which you didn't know. Keep your eyes peeled next time you're on here to enjoy the full experience. The best thing is, is that because this is my nearest cable car station to home, I can walk home from here, which is about 10 miles that way. 